Welcome. Good, good morning. Welcome all to Said Business School at the University of Oxford. And I would like to start off by so acknowledging a small miracle because we have this full room with two, like a minute to spare, everybody was here and everybody made it to Oxford. There's a few people straggling, but it looks like everybody, everybody's gonna come on time and that just doesn't happen in my experience. So thank you all for, uh, for, for just making it on time and coming through and uh, I hope that uh, you're gonna have a good time here with us. So my name is Dominic Lukesh. Some of you may have seen me on the YouTube and the conference website. I uh, am a digital learning technologist here at the Science Business School, uh, along with my colleague Tim, who's not with us because his wife has had a baby uh, yesterday. So, uh, you know, some people will jump at any excuse not to come to work. <laughs> and uh, so, so this is our, uh, I almost at first, because, but I really don't know if there's gonna be a second, a symposium, conference, get together, unconference, I don't know what, to call this on the use of video in higher education and hopefully sort of bringing a lot of your guys' experience and, our, and uh, thoughts and ideas, questions and answers together in this, in this day. Uh, so uh, you will see here there's a Twitter wall in the back and there's a Twitter wall here, so please do tweet up a storm. If you want to start taking notes, uh, if it's, the bitly, it's the bit.ly link on the VIHE, Video in Higher Education, uh, collaboration, so there, there's, there's a Google Doc that will take you to other Google Docs, you can take notes all the way through, put feedback in, uh, and of course you can then find all of that will be published on the website, uh, which, you can, which you've already been to because you had to register through it. So one more time, welcome. So let me just tell you a bit more about the facility before we get to the meat of, of the thing. So this is seminar room A, and there's a founder's room that you've, most of you have been acquainted with, uh, which is where all the, the food will be. This morning we'll start in this room, but in the afternoon we'll be split over these two rooms. So we'll convert this room in the afternoon into a similar one like that, and we'll have tables to work around. Uh, if you will have also seen a sign right through here and to the left, that's where you'll be able to try the Rapid MOOC and the Oxford Hive. So you'll have a chance to do that at any time throughout the day if you just want to wander in. Uh, some of you wanted to record a video, so you can do that as well. Uh, we, I promised you two rapid bookings, but sadly we had one delivered, but we were not able to properly set it up in time. So we, not, we just have the one, but I think hopefully that will be, uh, that will be enough. Uh, and the hive is right across there. Now, you will have noticed that this building, somebody has, it's quite a beautiful building. Somebody's told me this morning that this is like one of the most architecturally interesting buildings they've been in a, in a long time. So, so thank you, thanks, thanks for that. But also it has some limitations, and one of them is access. <laughs> so once, you, once you're in, you can get out, but it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge to get back in. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, if, if you do have to leave here, then there's like a number at reception you can call and somebody will have to get you in. The reception cannot just let you in willy-nilly. So, however, you're not stuck in a building, because you will notice that we have some of these fresh grounds all over the place. Uh, and I, so, so you're welcome to use the courtyard over there, but there's also like a little park area. You can walk around there lunch or during break times. And speaking of fresh air, if you like to filter your fresh air through some cigarettes, then there is an area in the, in the far end. You, you will sort of notice some people sort of stalking around and, and in, inhaling all sorts of things. So, uh, so if, if, you, if you want to join them. Uh, uh. Now, many of you will have discovered where the ladies and gents are. So ladies are all the way to the end, to the left, and the gents are all the way to the, uh, to the right, that, that way. Uh, so that's about the facilities. There, has, there is no scheduled fire alarm for today. So should you, should you, should you hear one, make your way orderly to the way you came, back, came in, or in an orderly fashion and just Concrete outside, and we will then make sure that everybody's accounted for. Does anybody have any questions about our facilities or the, how to get from place A to B? Good. So thank you. So let me just spend a few minutes setting uh, the scene for the day. What I just going to maybe share with you a little bit of my journey, how I 
got here. And in the, if, if any, at any point during that moment you feel like you want to ask me a question or disagree with me or just uh, tweet about being here, please, please do that. So the theme of today is bringing together research, the technologies, pedagogies, and policies. So all across, and, and if you look at the agenda, then, uh, then you see that that's pretty much covered. It covers that whole range. And, and I'm sure if you look inside, uh, inside the brains of the people who were not on the agenda and who have maybe opportunities to work during the open time, then I'm sure we'll sort of have these topics there as well. And so obviously I'm hoping that today we'll sort of cover what works, what uh, are some of the challenges, and what are some of the concerns when it comes down to video. Let me share my journey into video in higher education. So I started my first video conference when I was teaching in Glasgow in 2001. I did a video conference and it took four people on each end uh, and went with London and then went with Prague and that was a glorious one. And then I didn't do another one for like 10 years, but <laughs> for, my, for about eight years after that, I just didn't do one. But that was, that was a serious video conference thing back then, it was quite hard. And then I worked in Kazakhstan for, for, on a project and then I, Windows XP came out, and I had Windows Movie Maker, and I made my first, I exported stuff from the camcorder, and I, I edited my first movie in Movie Maker. So you see my credentials are very, very high tech in that. Uh, and then in 2006, I uploaded my first video on YouTube, which has now had 30,000 views. And then I've uploaded many more since then, and they've had about 20 views altogether after that. So. Uh, <laughs> So, so that's how it goes. And in 2012, we actually, when I worked for Dyslexia Action, we ran a MOOC on, called ITR, Inclusive Technologies for Reading, which was kind of a, uh, it was not the, it was not the, uh, uh, this, 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 there was a connectivist MOOC, not one of these sort of extension MOOCs. And for that, we uh, actually built a studio because we had some funding, so we built a studio. So that was like a massive, massive process. And I also spent a lot of time with Camtasia recording little screencasts and little mini lectures. And that, that was just, Six years ago, it just feels, you know, feels like it was yesterday and a million years ago at the same time. And then, then last year, I went to uh, the Learning Technology Show in London, and I saw this thing called Rapid Move there, and I just immediately knew I wanted one. Uh, so, by the way, I am not being paid for this. This is, uh, <laughs> I just want to explain, but Rapid Move are paying for, for our food, so, so, so but uh, that's all the uh, commercial said. But, and, and then I came here and I said, well, let's get a trial for one week, and we got one, and then we... I applied for funding from the university, and it's innovation funding, and, then just, and they said, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, they said, why don't you buy two? So we bought two. And uh, then we sort of started in July and August, and, and since, then we've, uh, since then we've made look, well over 100 videos, including the one that you saw announcing this conference. So, 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 that's, so we've been making lots of videos now with, with, with this new technology, even though I know many of you here use many other technologies. So it's not the only one that you can do it with, but I've, just, I've kind of been quite empowered. And as part of this funding by the university, we, as part of our sort of mission to expand our sort of depth of knowledge and abilities and skill set, we also promise you to sort of organize a symposium. So this is, so, so this, that part of the symposium is being paid for by the University of Oxford. So I just, that's why the journey came through. So we, so in, you know, in exchange for giving us money to buy these rapid move units, they also said you have to do some, uh, some trainings and some, and some sort of outreach. So this is part of that outreach as well. So, so thank you all for help, helping me make that possible and, and fulfill my promise to, to the funding body. So I, I was uh, at DigiFest, it was a couple of weeks ago, no, quite a few weeks ago. I was sharing this following quote, and it's kind of interesting. I always thought this, everybody knows this quote, but I'm going to show that in a minute. So can you tell me what year was that was said and perhaps by whom? So, so here's the quote. Books will soon become obsolete. And because everybody will be instructed through the eye, and uh, it will be possible to teach every branch of human knowledge with a motion picture. Our school system will be completely changed inside of 10 years. Ooh. And we have some evidence that proves conclusively that video is better at making the scientific truth that are otherwise difficult to understand from textbooks much plainer and clearer to children. So any guesses as to what year that was uttered? 1970 is one, okay. Anybody wants to go lower, higher? 20, okay. We're, we're adventurous, 25. Anybody else? 2001, okay. That could have been. And uh, so, 
Anybody wants to guess who might have said something like that? So, ladies and gentlemen, the, the year was 2013, and the man was Thomas Alva Edison. That was before the talkies were, that was before uh, motion picture theaters were all that common around the world, and he already was kind of thinking that ahead. So, so 2013, uh, so uh, 1913 plus 10 years, what happened? <laughs> What on earth happened? Why are we not, why, why, why are the books doing around? Why, why don't we do everything through video? So my, I was, I was looking at the history of video in education, and it's amazing that in every decade or every sort of generation, there is this thought, okay, we now have the video, and we're going, we'll figure out the video, we're going to transform the way learning is done. So we had the uh, public service announcements and children's programming all the way through 40s, 60s, and that sort of an open university, many of you will remember, uh, and uh, in the U.S. Schoolhouse Rock, if you're, in, you know, so there's all these videos, and and then in the 80s we had the laser disc that's going to change everything, and then VCR and everything sort of was changing. And then in the 90s, CD-ROMs that was that was going to change the world. And uh, so so why 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 not? And so my and so hopefully we'll answer that question. You know, if are we now in that same state that we were in? Are we still because many of us are thinking this? Our video is going to change the world, and but are we still kind of in that sort of 1913 mode of sort of overestimating. So I think in 1913, video did not have a chance of replacing textbooks because of the specifics of production, consumption, and distribution. So it's really hard to consume it. You have to go to a specific room. There has to be, it has to be it's, it's very linear, so there's no easy way to jump back, skip back. Everybody has to be looking at the same thing. Uh, you need to expect some equipment. Production, it takes forever. Right? It ages quickly. You know, a video made 10 years ago looks like, you know, looks like it was, it just looks so dated now. Just, just look on YouTube, right? Videos that we were thinking, we're at the cutting edge, and now it looks like, what were you doing? And, uh, and it's difficult to modify, unlike a textbook. So it just, so that just kind of goes against it. And of course, it was very expensive to modify, you know, to, to, to ship around, to give it to people. And, and even VCRs, you know, you know, how many of you have rolled a trolley with a VCR and a TV into, into a teaching room, right? And then, and then sort of queued it up carefully, and then, and then it turns out the queuing was all wrong, and, you have to just, and half of the lesson is just kind of shifting back and forth and, and pausing on these fuzzy frames, right? So the VCR didn't seem to, didn't seem to change this. But I am going to be so more... I think we've already gone through the revolution in video, and I think that's because of YouTube. Right? YouTube has changed so much of this in, on the delivery side and the consumption side. Delivery is free. Consumption is free and mobile. You know, on your phone, your tablet, on your TV, any, anything you want. Uh, and uh, it's easy. It's easy to consume because there are no captions. It's easier to you can listen at double speed. You can put navigation in. You can use something like H5P. And it's easy to produce. You have cheap tech. You have a phone. You have some like rapid mode, which is perhaps a cheap. But it, uh, and then, but you know, so you have all these things. And that's already enabled all these new pedagogies, the new, the new books, the, the flipped classroom, the, uh, the sort of informal learning revolution, lecture capture people, I want to be talking about that later, right? And we have platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, bandwidth providers like Akamai, all of these guys. You know, so there's new platforms, businesses, uh, new institutions, you know, Khan Academy, who, who would have imagined that you know, 10 years ago? So, so uh, I, sort of, I summarize this in this little course that I created a video in, using video on, on video. And I put up together some samples on this, on this URL, some samples of, of educational videos that I think are kind of instructive of the variety of that, that exists. But I want to be mindful, that's kind of my sort of hopefully setting up the theme for today, I want to be mindful of the, of the hubris and ultimate folly of Edison, right, in, in 2013. So, so I think we still have some questions ahead, and that's why I'm hoping you will help me, and, well, not answer them, but help me sort of explore those questions and maybe come up with some answers and hopefully there will be so that's gonna you know if I was Urkel Poirot I would say you may be wondering why I gathered you all here so this is why I still have some questions and need some help and uh, so how do we know what we know how do we know what is good what isn't good you know so so there's a lot of best practice out there but how do we know that's what it is what are the best formats what are the best contexts of these what, you know, how uh, is, is it always working that well is it what are our pedagogical assumptions that we're making when we're making educational videos. And you know, what is the context of it, what is sort of the context of it is versus informal versus institutional learning? 
And uh, so, so, so as, as kind of like a little micro case study, so if you, if you Google around the internet about how long should a video be, it will not take you very long before somebody will send you, to, uh, will sort of pr proclaim that no video on the internet must be longer than two minutes. And mind you, there are many videos on the internet that are two minutes long and they're about you know, one and a half minutes too long. So that's not necessarily always, always long. But then you go to our site business school front page and out of the 15 videos, four of them are close, about an hour long. And of the most popular, the top, the most watched videos. So there's some research that I've so I looked at. Is there any academic research? And there's a lot of research been done on MOOCs on when people stop watching the video. So, so how the attention goes. So you have like six minutes drop off after six minutes is about what the research thinks to. But then you search on YouTube for something like calculus, and uh, the the fourth video that's I don't think about popularity, but so the the ones that YouTube think will are most, most sort of relevant to your search of calculus. And there's an hour and a long, <laughs> hour and a half long video, video that has that a million and a half point two views, right? It's, and it's a guy standing in front of a whiteboard. Or, <laughs> so, and the other videos are all 20 minutes or longer because calculus is hard. And they all have millions of views. And there are many other hour long videos that have had that many, you know, tens of thousands of views perhaps. Right? So obviously if I research it in the same way I research the MOOCs, then perhaps I will discover of those 1.2 million, how many of them made it all the way through to the end. Right? So that's 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 a legitimate question. But here I sort of I sort of ask myself, now is are we and that's kind of the same question people have about MOOCs, right? I mean who how few people finish MOOCs, how few people finish these videos. But my question is that perhaps to me it sounds like we're thinking of learning as an event, as a one-time thing, where you say, this is your one chance to learn about calculus, and if you didn't make it to minute you know, 93 of the video, then somehow you have failed in the learning. But perhaps, but if you ask any one of us here in this room, I would say everybody would agree that learning is a process. And maybe this sort of new ecosystem of videos is allowing people to kind of enter into this long-term process of learning cyclical self-directed. And so the question, even though we see this, I think, I don't know, you know, you may disagree, but, uh, but I think the informal learning revolution in video is, is happening, it's happened. Who here has not learned something by watching a video? Yeah. I've learned a lot, I've learned so much, it's, it's amazing. But who here has learned something really useful by watching a video as part of a course at an institution? One, two, three, two, uh, yeah. So, a few tentative hands, I, I haven't, <laughs> right? I mean, partly because I'm old. But, uh, but, but, it's, but I would say that that's, it's, but it's kind of has that, so, so that's my question is, so that's kind of like my question that I hope maybe, maybe some of you will sort of uh, help me answer is that if you, uh, if you agree that video has re revolutionized informal learning already, because you know, there's things that, from fixing uh, my, my washing machine to learning the piano, things I couldn't have done you know, in the, in the old days, I just remember if I wanted to learn how to fix a washing machine, I had to take a course at a local college and, and then hope that one day my washing machine would break so that I could fix it. But, it, but you know, it, or, or I would have to walk around with dirty clothes until I, the, the course had an open slot. Uh, so that's already happened. But, can, but sometimes can we actually translate all that into the institutional context, right? If it's in a course that has, is all event-based and directed by exams and institutions, and it's kind of like a one chance saloon. So, so is, maybe is it a completely different, different beast? I'll be like, you know, and I, I don't know, I don't have an answer to that, but I'm just gonna, that's kind of where I think perhaps some of the, some of the worries that, that we might have about being over enthusiastic with Edison and, and so on. So that, that's kind of where, where I think. So, so I'm hoping that we'll have some of the, well, some of that discussion throughout the day. I'll just ramble down a little bit. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm reasonably passionate about video. I don't know, it's just, it, seems, it feels like it changed my life. Uh, and uh, so what's the day ahead? So you all have, and I'm gonna have to start out with an, uh, with an apology. Half of you have a beautiful badge with the agenda on the back of it, and half of you don't. <laughs> and I'm gonna blame Microsoft and Mail Merge, but the real culprit is, is me, because I printed it out and it seemed so so good, and I was thinking, surely mail merge is a solved problem. It turns out it isn't. Something went wrong, and it only half of them got printed. Mm -hmm. So my apologies 
My apologies for that. So, uh, so this is the this is the agenda for the morning. Uh, so we're going to have two sets of lightning talks. And again, my original intention was to, to sort of intersperse table discussions of lightning talks, but it turns out it takes about twenty minutes to rearrange the room uh, because we have to put all the ta all the tables around and everything. So, so we're going to have the we're going to have the lightning talks in two blocks. So I hopefully I think hopefully I think they're all sound very exciting. So I think we'll be able to concentrate for that. And then we'll have lunch, and after lunch, we'll have the table discussions. During lunch, they'll rearrange this room so that we can do, we can do that. And then, uh, and you already, so it will look like that room. <laughs> and then, we'll, so we'll have a sort of table discussions uh, on that. And, um, then, and then we'll end with the open space. And again, we don't have like a formal gathering to come back here uh, after, the, after the end of the open space. The open space will work a similar way to table discussions. Uh, so, Open space, it's kind of un this, the unconference bit. So that's where any on all discussions are welcome. You're also welcome to go try the rapid MOOC and Hive. You can do that even during the breaks or any time actually when you feel uh, that, you, and, uh, that you want to do some, that you want to learn more about those. And so the principles of this, have, you've probably all been to an unconference, so you, you know how that works. So, so what we're gonna do is there are two flip, uh, two flip chart stands over there with slots, table numbers, and some slots. So, so if you'd like to suggest a topic, write on a post-it and, and attach it to a slot, and then, and then say, I will be in this table at this time, and people can come talk to me about it. So it could be anything, anything you want to do it during the breaks. Um, you can tweet about it. Uh, and if somebody else agrees with that topic, you can write some more. Okay, I'd like to talk more about this. Put a name, put a name next to it. So feel free to do that. And the whole principle of the day is, of, of that part, is that don't worry about, you know, be, be bold. Offer interesting topics or just maybe you're welcome. If, if you represent an institution that has some, a product to offer, that's fine. That you can talk about anything you want. Just if people want to come talk to you about it, that's fine. Those are the four principles of the open space, which is whoever comes is the right person to have come. Whenever it starts is the right time, except uh, it's going to have to end when they keep us out of here. <laughs> Whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened, and when it's over, it's over. So that's the that's the idea of this sort of open space. So so don't feel bound by anything. This is time for you to get as much from each other because you are the real resource in in this room. And uh, also the other principle is the law of two feet. So if you feel like you're not learning something, maybe that's even sitting here listening to me. Uh, feel free to. Use your own two feet and just rapid move. There's things to, to see around. Uh, and so feel free to, to do that. So that is the, that is, uh, the plan for today. So please suggest your topics for the open space on those slip charts. And also, please uh, you know, do use the collaborative documents to take notes. So if you do have a discussion and you feel so minded, it's not compulsory. Open one of those Google Docs and take some notes, maybe links to things you talked about, ideas, questions. And what I'll do, I'll close those documents. They're open to everybody to edit right now. And I'll close them tomorrow, so you can make, or late tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, the day after. So you can make some edits on the way home as well. And then we'll share them with everybody. So that's the idea behind those documents. <laughs> so not only did we start on time, we're actually ending slightly ahead of time before you launch into the lightning talks. Anybody has a question, suggestion? Disagreement? Okay. If it gets too hot in here, we can open these doors. Well, they, they do open, so we can maybe during the breaks do that so that people don't get, get a chill. So I think we'll, what we'll do is, is we'll launch into our, into our, um, into the, the talks, into the lightning talks. So, so we have, so if you're doing a lightning talk, please come, come forward and we'll open your, I think it's James is the first one. And we'll give you a clicker and a microphone. And I'll have it, and we'll have it, oh sorry. That's the microphone, that's the clicker. And, and I'll set a timer over there for you on that, on that computer, so it'll be a 